Hi everyone, I'm Richard and this is the GTX 1050 Ti. In fact, actually it's two of them. What we have here is an entry level mini Zotac model and alongside that, there's the MSI Gaming X version, factory overclocked out of the box. The TI and indeed the entry level 1050 we've not yet been sent for review. Well, they're both based on Nvidia's new GP107 processor. This is the smallest, the least capable, and of course the cheapest Pascal processor that Nvidia makes, but still surprisingly powerful. Okay, so custom cooler apart. The two TIs here have much in common aside from the core silicon. They're both dinky little cards, the Zotac especially, and video outputs are kept to a minimum. We're looking at one dual link DVI, a display port and HDMI 2.0, but it's the point of differentiation that's the interesting thing here. The MSI model features an additional six pin power input, whereas the Zotac, well, that just plugs straight into the motherboard. No extra juice required at all. And that's pretty cool, literally. It means that it'll fit into many more entry level PCs, exactly the kind of market that the GTX 1050 and the TI model are aiming for. But of course, this part of the market is where AMD has recently targeted its efforts in the form of the Radeon RX 460. So I guess the burning question you must have is just how well they compare. Well, to put it frankly, it's not great news for the red team. The 1050 Ti isn't just a little bit faster, it's way, way, way ahead. So, Crisis 3 here. 32% faster. That's a big extra chunk of performance for not much more money. And something we should point out is that the Zotac card tested here doesn't seem to have a factory overclock in place, whereas the RX 460 we had is an ASUS Strix model, which does indeed have a factory OC. Secondly, let's take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider in DX12. Yeah, that's another 30% lead. The Division? Well, that's one of the most demanding games that money can buy. 20% faster on GTX 1050 Ti. But what about AMD's lead in DirectX 12 titles? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples where the red team has traditionally dominated. Ashes of the Singularity? Yep, there's no competition. The GTX 1050 Ti is 26% faster. The only game in our test suite where RX 460 gets close is Hitman, of course. But even here, GTX 1050 Ti is faster. About 5% faster, actually. Next up, let's take a look at how the 1050 Ti compares to prior Maxwell cards in the same performance ballpark. When it launched, the GTX 960 with just two gigs of RAM cost about $200. The $140 1050 Ti is pretty much on par, as you can see here in the division. And yeah, that extra two gigs of RAM in the Ti can really come in handy, as you can see here in Assassin's Creed Unity, where the differential is really pronounced, and it probably wouldn't be if the 960 had four gigs of RAM. And returning to Hitman DX12, yeah, this game is a memory monster maxed out, and it hits two gig cards hard. So, what about overclocking? The Zotac model here has no PCI Express power input, meaning that you're stuck with a 75 watts power ceiling. But despite this, I could add 220 megahertz to the core and 400 megahertz to the RAM. But I was really curious to see how the MSI model here would shape up bearing in mind that effectively we have all the power we really need via that additional power connector. Okay, so let's take a look at The Witcher 3 here. We've got Zotac and MSI performance out of the box here, and there's a small advantage in favor of the MSI card thanks to its factory overclock. We can add the same plus 220 plus 400 OC to the MSI card here and push beyond the 75 watt ceiling. But funnily enough, the gains aren't so pronounced. There is more performance to be had, that's for sure, but it's literally just 50 megahertz more. It's not a game changer then, and to be honest, having seen the MSI GTX 1060 boost to 2.1 gigahertz, I kind of expected more from the 1050 Ti. Now, generally speaking, smaller processors tend to overclock higher, but not in this case. And speaking of the GTX 1060, well, that actually brings up an interesting point about price versus performance. So let's return to Crisis 3 here on the GTX 1050 Ti and let's factor in the 3 gig 1060. That's a huge performance differential. The 1060 is a good 62% faster, 
but in the UK at least, base price between the two models is just 35%. In effect, I think that the 4GB Ti model is maybe just a bit too pricey for the performance that you get, even though it actually has more memory than the 3GB 1060. Similarly, AMD's RX 470 is another decent card offering a ton more performance for not that much more money. And regular viewers will recall, of course, that I had exactly the same criticism of AMD's RX 460. The RX 470 just offers so much more performance if you're just prepared to spend a little more money. And I kind of think that once again, perhaps I'm maybe looking at the wrong products here. I mean, this Zotac card in particular is pretty awesome. It's almost certainly the fastest GPU money can buy that requires no additional power supply input. And as usual, MSI has provided a beautifully crafted piece of technology here. And yeah, the GP107 processor itself is super cool to the point where these cards can spend a lot of their time under 50 degrees Celsius under load despite the really high clock speeds. But I strongly suspect that the 2 gig GTX 1050 isn't that much slower and it certainly costs a lot less. Now you'll need to be a lot more careful with memory management there but I'm willing to bet that the base 1050 could well be the new budget king. Something I hope to find out soon enough. But that's all I've got for you right now. Please do like and subscribe to support Digital Foundry and I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching.